the biggest tip I can give you guys right now, no joke, is anytime you take off any hardware for any part, put it into a bag and label it where it went. You will not believe how much time that saves when you're going to put it back together. Uh, right here with the mirror, yeah, I actually hadn't even pried that off at all previously. I just kind of went up there, pulled it. Uh, you probably might want to do some tape or something if it's really stuck on there. Because, yeah, you might be breaking the mirror getting it off. Uh, got it off, realized that uh, it was still siliconed on, so I kind of had to improvise. Didn't have the razor. Did a quick little scrape on the bottom and just pops right off. Simple as that. Um, really, I don't can't guarantee that the mirrors are that uh, easy to take off. Uh, so be prepared in case you need to do a little extra work. From here on out, it's a simple unscrew, unbolt. Uh, do whatever it was um, that uh, that all that hardware was installed with to simply take it off. You know, the wife and I always thought this was kind of a nice decorative piece until I took it off, and yes, they were covering up a hole. Seriously, some of the things people do to, to cover up their mistakes. First of all, I kind of don't know why I got that big of a hole in the first place, but long, you know what, either way, uh, luckily the trim was really easy to take off, you know, uh, trim on here, it was just nailed down, so easy to take off, paint, um, I'd much rather take it off and paint it separately than tape and paint it, oh man, that's a big pain. Well, my wife hates the textured walls, and I'm doing what's called, it's a skim coat, I could totally be doing it wrong, but heck, you know, it worked. All I did was threw down a whole bunch of mud on the wall and then scraped it flat. It does uh, take uh, quite a bit of sanding to get it all nice and smooth and flat, but hey, you know, you got the flat walls afterwards. Anytime you're done with plumbing, make sure the water's off. Really, it's kind of a no-brainer. I wasn't doing anything with the valves, so simply shutting it off here was good enough for my job. Make sure the tubes are out of the way. Make sure your drain is disconnected. Yeah, that's an important part. And um, what was it? My countertop only had like three or four screws holding it on. And with a quick pass of the razor blade to get that silicone free, it comes off this easy. Trust me. And if you're like me and most people, you're getting rid of that. That's why you're taking it off. So go put it out on your front lawn and then just pray that night that someone comes and takes it. That way you don't have to cut it up into a whole bunch of pieces like I did to fit it into the garbage can. The light fixture face just pops right off. It's only the base that's actually mounted to the wall. I may or may not mention it again, but please turn the power off. And that is more than just flipping the switch at the wall, yes. And after that, it really is just a simple three wires. And they're color-coded too. So th something I want to mention right here, sorry it's not a wide angle shot, but of course the wife loved this light setup. And so if you look right there at the center of the vanity and then go on up the wall, uh, yeah, look, it's not on the center. So of course, what do we got to do? Well, got to make a hole in the wall and move that uh, mount over a couple inches. I, I was thinking about just adding another box uh, but in reality, when I went to the uh, actual back to Home Depot, yeah, nothing was, you cannot finish a job with only one or two trips to the to the hard, hardware store, right? They make this really neat box assembly where you've got the conduit box and the rail attached to it. So all you got to do is attach that rail to the two studs on each side and you can slide the box to wherever you want so made it super easy well worth the couple bucks and of course my hole wasn't big enough originally so had to do a couple cuts of the drywall to throw it up there and then of course it made for some fun you know extra mudding project uh, taping mudding <laughs> tape I should have taped it but you know what what's a couple more coats of drywall mud uh, to get the project done well you actually see I needed one or two more coats here soon before we get to that, I'm going to jump on over to the wife. She's been actually in the garage the whole time doing all this prep work for those cabinet faces and the painting. 
Uh, we did just a quick sanding, and that's just to kind of rough up that uh, glossy surface, something to adhere the paint to. And it was a couple coats of paint. Uh, not even going to tell you what color to choose on that. We obviously went with a, a bluish gray, or I'd actually say a gray with a, a hint of blue in it. And we ended up using that for the not just the face of the cabinets, but the trim, the baseboards, and the door itself. Now for the walls and the ceiling, we did go with a white that was on the same palette as that uh, bluish gray, I guess you can say. Uh, in reality, you'll see lots of places that go with a white cabinets and gray walls. And well, that's what we went with. And yes, sometimes the wife forgot that we were filming this little project. I honestly would have uh, shown her a lot more. Well, not that's not just because she's a lot better looking than me. But yeah, sometimes the camera angle got a little obscured with some objects. Uh, here I'm coming back to the cabinets. And you saw me pulling the hardware out of a little baggie. Like I mentioned earlier, went super easy. Um, everything went in just right where it was because it was all labeled. And now we're finally getting to some of the fun stuff when you're actually seeing it get together. This was a marble countertop, like I mentioned earlier, that we bought from Lowe's. It was uh, prefabricated, meaning those holes and the sink bowl came with it, already installed. So you got to keep in mind, if you get one that's already pre-cut, uh, like ours, had the three holes you gotta fit you gotta pick up a faucet that has the three holes as well and that's just one of the great things about having really some pre-made cabinets already done because they have standard sizes um, you know simply going through some of these other clips it's as you're assembling you want to make sure that everything's level or else you know it's kind of like a picture frame it's going to be staring crooked at you, back at you every time you go into the bathroom. So here's a shot now of the faucet. Uh, it was just a, a simple three-piece faucet. There wasn't anything fancy here. And almost, uh, I'm pretty sure here, that all of them come with the standard size holes. So in other words, if you get a three-hole countertop, any three-piece faucet would work. My only suggestion during that assembly would be, well, have someone up on top holding it in place because as you can tell, I had a little struggle and I'm six foot four. Yet we're flipping back to the lights now. Uh, yeah, double check that your power is off. Uh, yeah, you'd probably know if it wasn't, but it's really, it really is as simple as uh, color coded uh, paint by numbers there. You only got three wires. Uh, just make sure that the wire nuts are tight and you can tell my lovely little uh, gap that I made there because yes, my drywall wasn't cut well enough. The mirror is just attached with some construction adhesive and really, yep, just thrown up against the wall. Now I do add some tape and just a bar because I thought, hey, you know what? If they do uh, some uh, tape over your windshield, why not on the vanity mirror, right? If you have never thrown down a silicone bead, that is just one of those subtle details that I guarantee you will pay attention to every bathroom you go into from here on out. Sorry, well, it's going to be on your mind and you'll catch your eye every time you go into one. Uh, let's move back underneath the sink now, attaching all of the, all of the pipes, tubes, uh, drains, all that good stuff. My advice to you would be, read the instructions okay every faucet every drain they come with instructions and yeah so pay attention to when they say put the gasket here or lay some silicone here i just did a quick shot of how yeah my new countertop with the sink installed the drain did not match up with the old one so if you're lucky then if you have the the drain system that i did well, yeah, it's a universal or flexible one. You can undo all of those fittings and slide it out, twist it over. In other words, it's not hard piped or it's not all glued in place. You can adjust all those. So it makes it, it, makes it extremely easy because really the chances of your new sink mating up with an old one are pretty slim. So just make sure that if you do have a hard piped one, 
then go get one of these universal or adjustable, I think they might be called flex drains. Um, all of the home, uh, home improvement stores carry them. So simple as that, it did go together really easy. Just make sure, like I mentioned, that the gaskets are all in place and tightened up. And for all of the other little fixtures, you know, your, your toilet paper holder, the towel rack, it's, it's all as simple as just throwing in some screws and tightening it up. Uh, that one that you saw right there, it actually did have a little template. Uh, put it in um, within about five minutes you're in. And same with this new vanity. I did have to adjust the cutout slightly, but uh, once that was done, a couple screws and you're all done. Throw down the trim with just a couple nails. Uh, yeah, it's not really worth pulling out a compressor and using some brad nails, but uh, I, I wouldn't use staples. But yeah, just with how small a bathroom is, nails work just fine. You know, throw up the door and sit back and relax and you can enjoy the hard work that you finally done, completed, looks great. And we'll end the video right about here and just show you a couple shots of what it ended up looking like. So